It's like a, a Yellow Jackets subreddit yeah. that's really, really active, full of conspiracy theories and, and fan theories. Are you on that? I, I really am. I just, I can't, I can't help myself. I just want to hop on and see what people think because it's really exciting when someone gets something right. You're like, man, I would have never, because I read the scripts. I never get it right. By the time we, I read the next script, I'm like, oh, so this is what they did. I have no idea. You can't guess it. Almost never. Hi, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate how, being you, here. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. You know, just kind of riding the wave. Was there a specific moment where you started to realize, oh my God, this thing has gotten pretty big? Honestly, it hasn't quite set in yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it was walking out at the new premiere. We did it at the Chinese theater. We had like fan pits of people there. And the carpet for that was like 95 feet long. I think it was when we went there that we were like, oh, like this thing is going to really grow this year. And it was just the marketing was everywhere and they did such an amazing job. But I'll tell you, the moment that I was shocked was I think it was actually this morning I saw that we have like 5.5 million viewers on the first episode of this season. Christ. And that first season has 65% more people watching now than they did then. So it's like, <laughs> it's just crazy numbers that I just can't even comprehend. I mean, it's it's old school, really, in some ways. It's just yeah. word of mouth, people talking about the show, you know? Yeah, that's what I always say. I'm like, my favorite part about the show is that Every time I meet someone from this that watches it, yeah. it's usually because someone bugged them to watch it. Like yeah. it's like their family friend is like, "Why haven't you caught up on Yellow Jackets yet?" So it's like a cool way to kind of know that it's passionate fans that are making the thing do it. Famous fans too: uh, Stephen King, Sharon Van Etten, Alanis Morissette. Yeah. Um, who is there anyone you found out who's a fan of the show or a fan of yours that's been that's been exciting for you to find out that they are? Stephen King was huge. Yeah. Right. Like Stephen King's come on, legend, legendary work, and more importantly, it's like creatively you respect some of these people so much like Steven. And so just to hear these things, it's again, I don't really, I, I, I believe that it's just all lies. Like, you know, what I mean? like you kind of just live every day going like, no, no, none of it's true. I'm just making it up in my head. That's uh, that's not a bad move actually, to be honest, yeah. because the alternative is pretty bad. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> the alternative is you're walking in going like, that's oh, right. Yeah. That's right. And you take that piano with you when you leave. Yeah, exactly. I walk out. Can we do some work though? Um, yeah. I wanted to lay some groundwork for people who haven't seen the show yet. Um, so you play the teenage version, as I mentioned, of a character named Travis Martinez. Briefly, can you set up how this guy ends up in, in the woods with the soccer team? Yeah, so Travis is the coach's son of the soccer team. And so he's brought on the trip with his little brother, not of his will at all. He didn't want to be there. But um, I believe there's some family disconnect that's happening. So he's trying to make sure he spends more time with his dad. And then, um, you know, it's not a spoiler. His dad dies right at the beginning. So uh, he's out there with the female soccer team, which he's not even close with. And he's stuck on his own with his brother trying to create connections that a 17-year-old boy is not going to be very good at doing yeah he's not very good at doing it no. I mean, there there are moments where i mean this character of yours is not incredibly likable he lashes out of people who care about him he's very impulsive how did you approach this character you know any character you have to make sure that you're championing and understanding every decision they make so it was really important to kind of go back to what kind of life skills did i really have at you know 13 14 15 those adolescent years and you know if things were put in front of me if i hadn't had people around me to tell me what was smart to do and what wasn't, like how I would approach it without that kind of guidance. And that's really what kind of informed my decisions with Travis is like, you know, he's in a world in 1996 that I had to take into consideration that, you know, expected him to hide all his feelings and never say anything that wasn't strong. And so he does that. That's how he acts. And he doesn't talk much with everyone, but when he does speak, it's aggressive. And, you know, we see him open up more and more when he creates a connection with Natalie. But I believe when I approached him, I always said, like, you don't speak unless you feel like mm. you have something that you can power over everyone with. Uh, can, I, can I ask how old you are? Yeah, I'm actually 31. 31. Yeah. So um, we're we're not too far from one another. Yeah. Um, I'm 35. Yeah. 36 in a couple of days. Ooh, exciting! Happy early birthday. birthday. That's what you, you're the gift. Yeah. Um, but the um, the, <laughs> the fire whoever gave this. <laughs> <gift>. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst Etsy gift I've ever yeah, gotten. Yeah, what this? But um, what you're saying to me is you you had to look back on how teenagers, especially men 
male teenagers were in the yeah. 1990s and maybe realize that the, that the amount of emotional growth opportunities that they would have had in the 90s mm-hmm. would have been different than the ones that you and I might have had in the in the 2000s. Is that is that right? Yeah, absolutely. And how things change and also what they were watching and in terms of like pop culture, like that really informs how we act around each other. So you look at kind of how they portray like the cool person on Saved by the Bell and like macho. Those, yeah, the macho yeah. side. And like even if even though Travis isn't, that's how he's trying to portray himself to everybody. Uh, really, really interesting. Um, the show is for people who haven't seen it. It's kind of like Lord of the Flies meets Lost meets Saved by the Bell. And, <laughs> and, and we see these teenagers trying to survive <laughs> winter in the woods. Did you learn anything about wilderness survival working on the show? Um, they're not great at wilderness survival, so not much. But I did get to climb a 40 foot tree, which was cool. Like I actually, I, I convinced the stunt team that I could do it. I was like, I'm, we're going to do it. And so, uh, yeah, that was really fun. So I got T- to do more like athletic. Tell things. me about that. Everyone finds his dad in a tree Yeah. and we don't know if he's dead or alive in the moment. And so he rushes up and it's almost like we played it as adrenaline, the wilderness, who knows, superhuman strength happens to him. And he just goes and he rockets up this tree, but he climbs it fast. And so we built almost like fake little branches just in the right spots and choreographed it the right way that he could just climb the tree, but they weren't going to let me do it. They were going to have my stunt do the whole thing. And so I went into set like three hours early to talk to the stunt coordinator. I was like, we will take it step by step and I'll do it. So I spent three hours rehearsing going, they would let me do 10 feet and they'd be like, okay, we're clear. We're good. Then 15, then 20 until I could show them. So I actually ended up climbing that tree for seven hours that day because I had to show them that I could do it safely. Were you scared? Not at all. I was excited to go for it. Heights? Like I, you weren't scared of him being 40 feet in the air? No, I just wanted to go. I, I didn't get to do the last 10, so it was actually 55 feet, I think, but they only let me go to 40 because they're like, you know, union rules, like you yeah. can't do this. But yeah, it was it was fun. Did you learn anything or think about um, kind of what happens when people are, are who find themselves in these sort of survival situations? The thing I love about this show is that even as a viewer, you sit there and you think, what would I do? How far am I willing to go to survive or to protect my loved ones? And this show puts us in a situation that makes you realize that I think humans can do a lot more things than we pretend civilized people would do if they had to. And so it was a really interesting kind of... um, way that we had to approach these roles to go like, oh, we have to justify some things that we would never as people consider doing because this show, they don't have a choice. It's this or nothing. And, uh, and I think that's really what I take away from this. It's like, we're capable of so much and that can work not just in the negative sense, but you know, I try and take it and go like, okay, positively we can handle a lot more as well. And so that's kind of, been massive for me like taking away from the show did you do any research into like real life situations like like this well yeah there's a bunch of different versions of this that have happened in like singles and in groups you know like you had the miners and you had you had the story the, the fluff light in the andes yeah exactly yeah. and so there's a bunch of great stories that kind of tell different versions of this but what was interesting about this was the adolescent side of it for me and like that you the conversations are not going to be the same as to how you get to a logical decision. There's no logic here. This is straight feeling and hormones and emotions taking control. And so that was kind of the difference. I got to research all these things and go, oh, but we're there's a difference with what we're dealing with, and it's the age. So for people who don't know uh, Yellow Jackets, it's it's what they call a puzzle box show, which means there's a lot of mysteries. Often, as a viewer, you don't know whether what you're seeing is real or if it's a hallucination. This, as I mentioned, has inspired a lot of fan theories. In particular, there's like a a Yellow Jackets subreddit that's really, really active, full of conspiracy theories and and fan theories. Are you on that? I, I really am. I just, I can't. I can't help myself. I just want to hop on and see what people think because it's really exciting when someone gets something right. You're like, man, I would have never, because I read the scripts. I never get it right. By the time we, I read the next script, I'm like, oh, so this is what they did. I had no idea. You can't guess it. Almost never. Right. What's the wildest fan theory, maybe even involving yourself? What's the wildest fan theory you've seen? The two wildest. One was that Javi was eaten by the bear that they end up killing at the beginning, at the end of season one. And so that means that everyone technically like had that. Another one was that Javi was the bear and no one realized and they just thought it was a bear. Right. 
But the wildest one with me was that, you know, there's a lot of people who kind of put out there that like somehow Travis was Antler Queen. Oh, interesting. And I was like, okay. Uh-huh. So, so and do you feel compelled to go on to the subreddit and go, hey, no. Not at all. Do you have I a fake account no that you post? No, I can't, I can't do it. I, 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 I don't want to, I'll be too tempted. If I have a fake account, I'll be too tempted to say something. Uh, when we were coming in here, one of our good friends, Alameen Abdel Mahmoud, who, who who hosts the show Commotion that comes on after this show, good good friend of ours, he said, I said, he, I said, do you want to meet? Because he's a fan of the show, and I said, do you want to do you want to meet Kevin? And he said, really, all I want to do is just say, like, can you just outline to me the plot of the next three seasons? Which made us think, do you know the plot, or, or do you just kind of know on a, as an episode by episode basis? So from the beginning of the show, I told the creators that I don't need to know anything except for stuff from his past that we're going to find out about in the future. And so those are the only things that I've ever pieced together from the creators. Everything else, I have no idea. You're finding out when you're getting the script. You're finding out like we are. Yeah, people spoil stuff on set while we're shooting. So they'll be like, oh, I heard that. Like, we're going to get the script for this one, and this one's co- this is coming. But nothing official, nothing crazy. I love the idea that what we're doing at home, wondering what the hell's going to happen, the actors are kind of doing it too. All the time. No, no, we're theorizing. The minute we get a new script, we're theorizing what the next script's going to be. It's pretty amazing. You know, you've been a prof- professional figure skater and actor. Uh, you just recently directed a short horror film. Desolate, yeah. Desolate. Um, you know, a really good uh, career ahead of you. I guess Yellow Jackets has not inspired you to want to become a survivalist, homesteader, live in the woods. Not even a little bit. I we spend <laughs> so much time in that cabin this year that like I don't need to be in. I don't need to go to a cabin for a long time. How's how how is like out in the wilderness? This is Calgary in BC, right? So we shoot most of it in BC. First season we shot in a big forest outside of BC that was beautiful. Um, so we were outside a lot, which was nice. But this second season, we've shot a lot of it in studio because we're in this condensed area with the cabin. So it gets super stuffy and dusty because we have the fake snow outside. And yeah. it, it's made of like paper and yeah. cornstarch. So it gets really congested all together because yeah. there's 14 of us in one little cabin. But then I got to go for two days to Calgary and shoot in four and a half foot snow. Like it was freezing and I was dying, but it was the most beautiful, picturesque place. Like it was amazing. Do animals ever blow a take? Does ever does a bird ever or a bear ever blow a take? Season one, when we were in uh, that forest, yes, definitely we had a few like birds that would come in or uh, like not come out or like something would just like come by the screen and you'd be like, okay, well we're gonna restart. <laughs> and sometimes as actors, we didn't even know you would just hear the tank go, okay, we're gonna go again. <laughs> a squirrel blew the take. Yeah, um, it's a really amazing show, and I think I mean I think it's only going to get bigger. I mean, the word of mouth about this thing is just going on. It must be amazing to be living through right now. Yeah, I, I would do this show for as long as they let us. But I know the plan. The plan for them is they're hoping five seasons. Well, f- fingers crossed for you. Thank you. And I'm happy you were able to come home to Toronto and see the family. And yeah, all. quick trip, see the family, talk to some cool people, and you yeah. know, I, I hope know. you get to talk to some cool people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, when are they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're they're coming for my birthday too. Uh, Kevin Alves <laughs> plays Travis Martinez on the show Yellow Jackets. You can watch season two right now, which is rolling out weekly on Showtime and on Crave. 